this thing on. All right, guys. Welcome back to EMT Made Easy and my second part for shock. I'm still trying to get a handle on how to use this, um, my phone as a camera. So shock. We covered, over, we covered perfusion, hypoperfusion, and the stages of shock. Now let's go over different categories of shock. There are three categories that I go over for shock, and they are cardiogenic shock, hypovolemic shock, and systemic shock. These are the ones that I cover. Now, as far as cardiogenic shock, uh, we know that, well, just in general, we know that shock means that O2 is not getting to where it needs to go in a timely fashion or not at all, which means that adenosine triphosphate is not happening, right? So all these shocks, these categories, they're all making that happen. One way or another, O2 is not getting to where it needs to go because of one of these reasons. So the cardiogenic shock, that means that your pumper is not pumping adequately. A good, some good examples of that would be cardi a cardiac tamponade, uh, tension pneumothorax. These two are what I call and what the book calls extrinsic cardiogenic shock. That means that something from the outside of the heart is preventing the heart from, from pumping adequately. It is causing hemodynamic compromise. Hemodynamic compromise is a fancy word for meaning that the blood is not flowing to where it needs to go adequately. That's what that means. And then you also have for cardiogenic shock, you have intrinsic cardiogenic shock. And that would include cardiac arrest and an MI, intrinsic. So cardiogenic shock means that your pumper is not pumping adequately. Your heart's not pumping adequately. So if your heart's not pumping sufficiently, it's not doing a good job. It's not going to pump blood to where it needs to go, right? So that means O2 is not going to get to where it needs It's not going to uh, get to where it needs to go. So therefore, we have hypoperfusion leading into shock because O2 is not getting to where it needs to go to make the ATP on time. Now we have hypovolemic shock. So hypovolemic shock means that we have low volume, right? This could be from hemorrhage. So if you're bleeding out, you're losing volume. Why does that matter? It matters because we need blood to carry oxygen to where it needs to go. If we lose blood, then we don't have enough blood to carry that oxygen to where so you see how it really just comes down to oxygen. That's really what it comes down to when it comes to shock. Um, we get hypovolemic from bleeding, burned. If we lose plasma, so we're still losing volume, right? Losing plasma, the platelet, dehydration. We're not producing, we're not making any more blood because we're not hydrating adequately, like severe dehydration. Like you're in the desert, Mojave stuck for like a month or something, and that's excessive, but maybe less than that. Who knows, you know? So, and then finally, we have systemic shock. Now, under systemic, we have neurogenic shock. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk about why this one right here, why this one is, um, has the, the fancy green stuff on the side. We have septic shock, and we have anaphylactic shock. These all affect the vascular system. So that means your vessels will dilate. They will bring pressure down. So if pressure, if your if your volume remains the same, if, so if your if your volume remains the same, like you have the same amount of volume, but you made the water hose bigger, that pressure is gonna plummet, right? So if pressure's down, that means that the the volume is not gonna move fast enough. It's like when you squeeze the water hose, right? If you have the water hose squeeze, your water will go out faster. But if you let go, it will flow out easier. Well, that's not good in the system. Because um, these two right here, let me see if I'll get this on here. Neurogenic shock cuts off your sympathetic nervous system. Your sympathetic nervous system constricts your vessels and elevates everything. Septic shock, what septic shock does is that it's pretty much a six, just a, an infection throughout your entire system, it's all over your vessels, and that's going to allow for your vessels to dilate, you know, because it's going to inflammate everything. It's going to cause permeability. Permeability is a fancy word for leaky. It's going to make your vessels leaky, so you're going to lose some volume, but internally. You're still in your body. And then anaphylactic shock, um, same thing. It's going to increase the, the circumference, so it's going to dilate your vessels, bringing that pressure down. So what it really comes down to is that they all lead to shock, right? So there's multiple ways of dying, but how is your patient going to die? So shock, O2 is not getting to where it needs to go. Now, that could be either because of a cardiogenic shock, which really means it's a pump issue, hypovolemic shock, which means it's a volume issue, or a systemic shock. 
should be one of these three. That means it's a vascular issue. Your vessels are not constricting, so pressure's gonna go down because they're opening up. Now, the reason neurogenic shock, you can see it there, it's like that, is because it's a special kind of shock. It's a special kind of shock in a bad way, in a very bad way. Because what happens is that, is that a neurogenic shock is a spinal injury. If I cut off your spine or damage your spine bad enough, what's gonna happen is that your sympathetic nervous system is not gonna be able to, tr uh, it's not going to be able to, to travel along your spinal cord to send the message to your peripherals to constrict the vessels and to your heart to elevate and to your lungs to elevate the respirations so you can't compensate. So neurogenic shock is the only kind of shock that you're not going to see compensation. It's all just going to go down, down, down. And your patient will eventually die. Um, I know these videos are kind of short. It's uh, both of these for shock, but I think I hit the mark pretty good. If there's still something that you're not too sure about, uh, I didn't cover, just go ahead and hit me up. Leave a message below or you know, uh, subscribe to it. <clears throat> if you're not subscribed, you have no right. I'm just playing. But uh, yeah, just uh, here they are. Cardiogenic shock, hypovolemic shock, and systemic shock. Under systemic shock, you have neurogenic shock, anaphylactic shock, and septic shock, which are all system-wide shocks because your vessels are throughout your entire body, right? All right, take it easy. Bye.